From Hollywood, California, the makers of old gold cigarettes present the Comedy Theater. The only radio program that brings you every week the greatest stars in the greatest comedies. Tonight's story, the Leo McCary RKO picture success, My Favorite Wife, starring Joe McCray, Constance Moore, and Gail Patton. And here is the director of the Old Gold Comedy Theater, Mr. Harold Lloyd. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Our play tonight is the story of a man and his wife and his favorite wife. You see, the man had two children by his favorite wife, while his other wife had none. <laughs> Confusing, isn't it? So we scoured the four corners of Hollywood to find an actor who had a favorite wife and two children. We uh, found one man who had a favorite wife and nine children. We found another who had nine favorite wives and no children. And uh, then, just as it seemed that our search would bear no fruit, we discovered a very fine actor who had a favorite wife and two children. And here he is, ladies and gentlemen, Joel McRae. <laughs> the other element needed to complete the recipe for tonight's offering was to secure two wives. Of course, we have to be careful whose wives we secured. And uh, here they are now, the two gorgeous, glamorous, and ever so sweet young ladies, Constance Moore and Gail Patrick. <laughs> and now on with our play. As our radio curtain rises, we find a corner. On the bench, wearing his flowing black robes, the judge is peering over the top of his glasses, puzzling over a brief he holds in his hands. Next to the judge, also wearing a worried look, stands his clerk. And just below them both, looking up anxiously at the judge, is a man, attorney Nick Arden, and a young woman, Bianca. These are the people appearing in the matter of Ellen Wagstaff Arden, Your Honor. I know, I know. I'm able to read. Yes, Your Will Honor. Will you but... stop trying to explain things to me? Uh... I can see what it says here. This woman, uh, Helen, uh, who do you call it, died and disappeared. Say, I just remembered, wasn't I supposed to marry somebody today? If Your Honor would just permit me to explain, I, I don't believe need that I... anybody to explain anything to me, young man. By the way, who are you? I'm Nicholas Arden, Your Honor. And as an attorney, I'm appearing for myself in the matter of my late wife, Helen Wagstaff Arden. Oh. Mm, yes, it says that right here. It's a sad case, Mr. Arden. Very sad. If Your Honor, please, I just that want... your wife was a member of an anthropologist? Answer, uh, an expedition, and was shipwrecked off the coast of Indochina. That's right, Your Honor. Now, if you will just turn to page 19. Never uh, mind page 19. Now, what I'm interested in is right here on page 4. Mother of two children. I know I shouldn't have let her go, Your Honor. And I've blamed myself every day for the last seven years. <laughs> I should think you would. A nice girl like that, going off alone on a anthrop anthro anthropological. Uh, never mind telling me what the words are. I can read. It's right here in the brief. Yes, Your Honor. Now, where was I? Oh, yes, yes. Shameful thing, letting your wife go like that. No wonder you're sorry. Uh, uh by the way, uh, who's this uh, young woman with you now? My name is Bianca. Lovely, isn't it? Yes, Your Honor, but I... I didn't ask you. <laughs> The court asks a question, Mr. Arden. If you're a lawyer, as you say you are, don't you know who's to answer? I'm sorry, Your Honor. The young lady is a, a friend of mine. <laughs> now, since all the facts are in the brief and supported by affidavits which are attached, all that's really necessary I is for you I know to... what's necessary. What you want is to, for me to pronounce your wife legally dead, I suppose. Well, well I... There's testimonies here, affidavits. No evidence to the contrary. The law is clear. I hereby pronounce Ellen Wagstaff Arden legally dead. Now, clerk, uh, wasn't I supposed to marry somebody? Yes, sir. Us. What? Well, you see, Your Honor, now that you've made me a single man again, I'd like you to marry the two of us. That is, uh, this young lady and me. Very confusing. Very confusing. Uh, you seem to be an able lawyer. Your brief is well prepared. Uh, are you sure you want to get married again? Your Honor, even though it may not be in the brief, I am over 21. $25 for contempt of court isn't in the brief either, but that's what you're getting. 
Bert, hand me the book for that marriage ceremony. Let's get this over with. I beg your pardon, Mrs. Arden. Yes, Philip, what is it? There's someone at the door to see you. Someone? Man or woman? I don't know, ma'am. Sounds like a woman, but dressed like a man. Wearing a sailor suit and a pea jacket. Hollywood influence, no doubt. <laughs> oh, uh, he, that is, uh, she wants to see me? She asked for Mr. Arden first, but I said he'd gone to Yosemite. Now, she wants to see his mother. Hmm. Well, show him or her in, Philip. Yes, Mrs. Arden. I'll be close by in case you need me. This way, sir. Mr. Arden's mother is in the library. It's not, sir, it's madam. And if you don't mind, I'd like to be alone with Mrs. Arden. Hello, Mother. I beg your... No. No, it can't be. Ellen! Oh, now, don't get up, dear. Your houseman is bringing you a brandy. You'll feel better in a moment. Where's Nikki? Ellen, where have you been all these years? It just isn't possible. Oh, but it is, and I'm home. But how? When? For seven years, my address has been latitude 12, longitude 28. An island, really just a speck on the face of the ocean. Then a Portuguese uh, freighter came along one day, and... Oh, here I am. Where's Nick, darling? Uh, 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 Nick? Is something wrong? Nick's married again. Married? But well, when did it happen? Just this morning. Just this morning? Oh. Oh, so that's why he went to Yosemite. Yes, naturally, a honeymoon. Oh, well, that's what he thinks. Have they got a telephone where he's going? Well, you ought to know. The last time he was there, uh, you were with him. I see. Darling, what number do you dial to get long distance? I want to talk to a man about a honeymoon. Darling, the groom is supposed to look at his wife once in a while. It isn't considered normal just to sit and stare around at the hotel room. It isn't? Well, you know, I, I was just thinking, these old hotels never change, do they? Same pictures on the wall and same curtains at the window. Wait a minute. Am I to understand that you've been here before? Well, uh, yes. Uh-huh. Let's see. Seven and five. Would it have been 12 years ago? Well, uh, approximately. Your first honeymoon? Oh, Nikki, darling. I know it's a little difficult, but, but all that's gone. What's done is done. Sure. And now we're here together. I love you, and, and you love me. Or do you? I love you? Well, don't be silly. You heard me promise to love, honor, and obey, didn't you? How terribly romantic. Nick, are you going to kiss me, or are you going to... I'm going to answer the phone. Oh. Hello? Hello, Nick, darling. Hello. Who are you calling? This is Nicholas Arden. Oh, but of course it is, darling, and this is Mrs. Nicholas Arden. Look, I haven't got time for any practical... But would you say that again? The only thing I want to say again is I love you, Nick. I love you, love you, love you. Uh, yes, I know, but... <laughs> I'm on my honeymoon. Nick, who is that? Oh, it's, uh, it's just a client. Uh, that's what it is, a client. Oh, Nick, how can you lie to the poor girl like that? Now, now look, when did you get back? I mean, how did you... I mean, I thought you were... This is awful. When did you get into town? Well, about four hours too late. You'd already left on your, um, well, whatever it was you left on. Now, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> but I am waiting, darling. I'm at your house, our house. And you're such a smart lawyer, my beloved. You should have a teensy little inkling as to what's going to happen if you don't annul your bigamous marriage and come home to your lawfully wedded wife. Hello. 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 Oh, Lord. Nikki, what's the matter? You look as if you'd just seen a ghost. Now, now look, Bianca. Something's happened. Something that's going to upset all our plans. Nothing's going to upset our plans. We're up here for a honeymoon, and we're going to make the most of it. Oh, Nikki, I'm so in love with you. Thank you. What? <laughs> Is that 
all you have to say when I tell you how in love with you I am? I'm sorry. I should have said thank you very much. (laughs) (laughs) Nicholas Arden, what's come over you? What's the matter with you? You treat me as if you'd never seen me before. Bianca, you've got to get hold of yourself. Well, that's more than you've done for me. (laughs) (laughs) Crying out loud. Now, will you stop and listen? That, that, that was a client of mine, an important client. It's the biggest case I ever had. I got to get packed and get right back home. You mean we've got to go back right now? Right now. We can't even stay here tonight and go back in the morning? If we stay here tonight, I won't dare go back in the morning. <laughs> oh, Nikki. Nikki, this isn't the way I pictured our honeymoon. <laughs> Modern, isn't it? <laughs> While they're setting the stage for Act Two, here's Bob Williams of our pet peeve department. Well, it's this way, folks. When Junior's behaving like Peck's bad boy and the little woman vows he's a chip off the old block if there ever was one, don't head for a hatchet. Hold on, mister. Why be irritated? Light an old gold. Yes, smokers, it's time to enjoy a cigarette when little things rile you. Now, an enjoyable cigarette is one that smokes right, not one that's hot, harsh, and dry. And so Old Gold's fine tobaccos are conditioned with the special moisture-protecting agent we call apple honey, developed from the juice of fresh apples. This helps prevent cigarette dryness. And furthermore, Old Gold's unique blend of many great tobaccos is enriched with rare imported Latakia tobacco, adding extra flavor to your smoking pleasure. Yes, extra flavor, extra pleasure, plus special protection against cigarette dryness. Aren't those what you want in a cigarette? Yes, try Old Gold as soon as you can. And remember, when petty peeves annoy you, why be irritated? Light an Old Gold. And now back to tonight's Old Gold Comedy Theater presentation, My Favorite Wife, starring Joel McRae, Constance Moore, and Gail Patrick. To the average man, being married to two glamorous women might seem more like a dream than a mess. But to Nick Arden, the problem seems more than he can bear. He is still deeply in love with Ellen, his first wife and mother of his two children. And he's afraid to confess to the fiery Bianca that Ellen has come back. Well, while Nick and Bianca are driving back from Yosemite, Ellen and Nick's mother are at home awaiting his arrival. (laughs) Now, really, Ellen, I don't (laughs) want to seem mother-in-law-ish, but I must say I don't see anything amusing in poor Nick's situation. Oh, poor Nick. I'll bet you anything he hasn't yet told his precious Bianca that I've come back. But if he hasn't told her, and they both come back here to the house... Well, that's what I was laughing about. Remember ten years ago when I played that little southern girl? You remember Linda Lou and that play we gave for the children's hospital? Yes, but... Well, uh... when Nick arrives, we'll be able to know if he's told her about me by the way he makes his entrance. What do you mean? Why, if he rushes in and throws his arms around me in front of her, he's told her. And if he stands there looking like a big sheepdog who's forgot where he buried a bone, (laughs) we'll know he hasn't. But then what? Well, if he hasn't told her, I'm going to get even with him by... Well, by playing that I'm a little old sweetheart of his from way down yonder. A sweetheart? Why, well, Mrs. Arden, don't you remember me? Ellen uh, Calhoun? <laughs> Why, you and my mother went to school together back down in Virginia. Oh, well, Ellen, <laughs> I, I hate to do a thing like this to my own son. <laughs> Ellen Calhoun from Virginia. <laughs> oh, Mother, shh, shh. I just heard a car pull up in the driveway. Wait a minute, darling. <laughs> it's Nick. Nick and Bianca. Well, I don't forget. Little old Ellen Calhoun, who's just dying to see her old sweetheart, Nick. Here they come. <laughs> come on, Bianca. I'll have Philip bring in the bags later. Nicky. Nicky, aren't you even going to carry me across the threshold? Well, I... All right. Now, if Mother's awake, we'll... Hello, Nick, darling. Why, shut my mouth, Nicholas. <laughs> Am I ever glad to see you all? <laughs> what? Well, by Nicky. You remember Ellen Calhoun. I used to go to school with her mother down in Virginia. Ellen Calhoun? Good night. Oh, Miss Alden, I'm sure you wouldn't mind if I just threw my little arms around your new husband and gave him a great big brotherly kiss. We used to be sweethearts, but I always told Nick it was just puppy love. Come over here, you big puppy. Throw your arms around. (laughs) (laughs) Mm -hmm. 
You're <coughs> so big and strong. Nick, did you tell her? No, no, not yet. It's an awful shock. I thought I'd tell her in the morning after a good night's rest. I don't think she's expecting that. I mean the shock. <laughs> All that whispering behind my back. Oh, I'm ever so sorry, sugar. I was just calling Nick my own little magnolia blossom. That's what I used to call him when I was 15. Nick, honey, remember all those real darling southern breakfasts we used to have together? How I used to just love to sit down to a big old bowl of weevils? (laughs) (laughs) Really, Miss Calhoun, you must have a remarkable memory. Oh, yes, haven't I, though, honey? I'll get her for that. And you'd better take her upstairs and break the news to her, Nick, before I break it to her over her head. Nick, you're not being very polite. Nick, are we going to stand here all night? Maybe you better not answer that question, Nicky, darling. But why don't you take your child right upstairs and make yourselves comfortable? Uh, well, you go on up, Bianca. I'll join you in a moment or two. Oh, no, you don't. You two little old lovebirds just toddle upstairs to your little nest where you can be all alone and talk. To your heart's content. (laughs) But I... uh, Nick. Yes, dear. Come on. Good night, you all. Don't worry about us none. You're talking. I said talking won't bother us one bit. (laughs) What a long tail our cat has. Darling, what's wrong with you? Or maybe I should ask, what's wrong with me? Uh, <clears throat> Bianca, I've got something to tell you. Oh, darling, you don't know how I've been waiting to hear it. And I love you, too. Uh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, thank you very much. <laughs> Bianca, you've got to listen. You see, truth is stranger than fiction. Uh-huh. I've always heard that a man confesses his dreadful past on his wedding night. But I don't care, Nikki. That is, if you're not interested in mine. Bianca. (laughs) Bianca, if you'd only listen. You see, when you have two children and they have a mother... I'll do everything I can to make Timmy and Chinch a good mother, Nick. I promise. That isn't what I mean. You see, fate sometimes does things that it's... It's fate uh... that we met, darling. Put your arms around me, darling. Uh. Uh, oops, hold it, hold it Oh, what? What's the matter, Nicky? Well, didn't you hear it? That's the doorbell Someone's at the door Someone to see me But darling, Philip will go Oh, no, he won't Phyllis is asleep I'm going to answer that door myself All right All right, hold your horses I'm coming Yes? Mr. Arden, I'm sorry to disturb you this time of the night, but this is important. I'm Johnson, the American Life and Accident Assurance Company. You know, we paid that claim of $100,000 for the death of your wife, Alan Wagstaff Harlan, you remember? Oh, oh, claim. Oh, yes, yes. Come in, Mr. Johnson. Am I glad to see you. You are? Uh, And how? Yes, yes. Well, this is just an idle rumor, but I've got to check up. You see, our office manager claims that he heard through somebody who talked to somebody who talked to somebody else that your wife was picked up off an island by a Portuguese freighter and brought back to this country. <laughs> Silly, isn't it? <laughs> oh, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I knew the whole thing was ridiculous. Listen to this. The man who talked to the man who was supposed to be aboard the Portuguese freighter said that this woman, whom they suspect of being your wife, was on a tiny island for seven years with some man she was shipwrecked with. <laughs> some man? Yeah, ridiculous, isn't it? <laughs> yes, 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 she called him Adam. <laughs> Adam, huh? <laughs> and I suppose he called her Eve Oh, that's it exactly, yes <laughs> Ever hear, hear anything more ridiculous, Adam and Eve? <laughs> Adam and Eve Yes Well, Mr. Rodden, I won't take up any more of your time Just had to check to fill in my report <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's quite all right, Mr. Johnson And if I should ever see my late wife <laughs> You'll be sure I'll talk to her about Adam and Eve <laughs> Nick, we didn't arrange it. It just happened. Oh, sure. Adam and Eve on an island in the Pacific. Seven years. Now, if you ever saw Stephen Burkett, you'd be ashamed of yourself. He's just a poor, harmless little man. Why, he even lives at the YMCA. Well, if his name is Stephen Burkett, why did you call him Adam? 
Well, because he called me Eve. Mm. Now, let me tell you something, Nick. Unless you tell that woman in the other bedroom the truth about us, I'm going to let off an awful lot of steam in public. Well, I started to tell her when the insurance man came. Will you go right in and finish telling her now? Oh, no, I won't. I'm going to the YMCA and see what this Adam looks like. Myself! <coughs> Look, clerk, I've been up all night. I've been to the YMCA, every hotel in town. And if you haven't got a Stephen Burkett registered here at the Pacific Club... I don't know what I'll do. Mr. Stephen Burkett? But he is registered here. He is? Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. I saw him come down from his room just a little while ago. And uh, there he is. Uh, see him outside? Oh, I don't see any. Wait a minute. You mean that big Hercules? That Tarzan who just did that swan dive into the swimming pool? Oh, yes. That's Mr. Burkett. Built like a... Never mind what he's built like. <laughs> <laughs> Adam. <laughs> Y-M-C-A. Poor, harmless little man. Seven years. Clerk, hand me that phone. Will you order, Mr. Arden? Well, I think I'd like one of your Pacific Club specials first. Make that two, waiter. Oh, on second thought, you'd better bring one of us a whiskey chaser. Very good. Oh, Nick, you're so cute. <laughs> of course, I'm not the harmless, insignificant type like Adam. Oh, you're still jealous, aren't you? <laughs> who, me? Jealous of a funny little old man who lives at the YMCA? <laughs> of course not. Uh, just how tall was Adam? Oh, tiny. About 5'2". <laughs> <laughs> Shrimp, huh? Yes. <laughs> and he only weighed about 80 pounds, soaking wet. <laughs> only about 80 pounds. <laughs> Poor little... Uh... <laughs> Ellen. Mm? Ellen, that man on the springboard, isn't he waving at you? It, um, oh, no. Don't, don't be silly. Yeah, he was, and he's coming over. Eve, Eve, Eve. I'm delighted to see you. <laughs> <laughs> Poor little old man. <laughs> 80 pounds soaking wet. Oh, hello, Ad, uh, Stephen. May I present my husband, Mr. Arden? Uh, delighted, Mr. Burkett. Uh, they certainly grow them big at the YMCA, don't they? <laughs> YMCA? Oh, that's, that's just a little family joke we have. Uh, join us in a bite, Adam? Well, yes, uh, yes, thanks. Uh, some raw carrots, a glass of milk, and some apples. Uh, Mr. Ron, I want you to know that I admire your wife very much. Oh, but I'm not his wife, Adam. That is, not exactly. You see, Nick thought I'd drown, so he remarried. Oh, well, in that case, I can speak what's on my mind. Mr. Arden, I should like to marry your wife. Just a minute. You've got your nerve. Oh, 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 Nick, 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 Nick. You see, after seven years, we... Oh, Adam and I have a lot in common. Oh, is that so? <coughs> well, how about it, Arden? Ellen, would you marry this muscle-bound tree swinger? <laughs> Unless you tell your beloved Bianca the truth and get that marriage annulled, that's just what I'm going to do. Go, 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 go away, you heard her. Go on before I start dropping coconuts on you. Act three follows immediately after Bob Williams and Company. Thanks, Harold. And say, friends, when your favorite mystery is on the air and the detective says, Killer Diller, the clue that will hang you is, and just then static spoils everything, don't tear your hair. Figure it this way. Why be irritated? Light an old gold. Yes, you'll tune in on real smoking satisfaction when you enjoy old gold's extra flavor, plus old gold's special protection against cigarette dryness. This superb blend of many fine tobaccos is enriched with costly, flavorful Latakia tobacco, and then conditioned with apple honey to help preserve natural moisture and prevent cigarette dryness. So for downright smoking pleasure... Light an old gold. And friends, please remember this. Even though we're producing all the cigarettes possible without sacrificing one iota of old gold's top-notch quality, the men and women in our armed forces get first consideration. But we're doing our best to assure fair distribution of all remaining old gold cigarettes. 
So, if you must be content with substitute brands today, take the comfort and the thought that tomorrow, if you ask, your dealer may have old gold. And now on with Act Three of the Old Gold Comedy Theater presentation, My Favorite Wife, starring Joel McRae, Gail Patrick, and Constance Moore. Well, after one look at that gorgeous hunk of man, Stephen Burke, who for seven long years played Adam to Ellen's Eve, Nick Arden found himself forced to tell Bianca the truth, and now he faces the consequences. Now we find ourselves back in the courtroom. On the bench, the same judge, the same flowing black robes, before him the same two people, Nick and Bianca. But this time, there are two more people with them, Adam and Eve. However, from the look on Bianca's face, this is certainly not a garden of Eden. Will you all keep quiet? What are you trying to do, confuse me more than I am right now? We're sorry, Your Honor. We? How do you like that? As soon as things get bad, he wants me a partner. <laughs> but really, Your Honor, I can explain. Well, I'm uh, not surprised. Any man with two wives has got to learn to explain. Your Honor, may I say something? May you say something? Oh, my pleasure, Miss Arden. Go right ahead. Oh, thank you, Your Honor. Not at all. Thank you, my dear. Your Honor, do you realize the humiliation and anguish this man has caused me? You poor, poor thing. Your Honor, how would you feel if you went on a honeymoon with a man who turned out to be a perfect stranger? I don't see anything perfect about him. I thought I did until... Your Honor, this is immaterial, irrelevant, Are you going to stop I... interrupting this poor, heartbroken, beautiful woman, you cad? Oh, thank you, Judge. My pleasure, Mrs. Arden. Uh, Judge, this whole thing is really quite simple. She's right, Your Honor. It's really quite simple. It's really quite simple. It's really quite simple. Let me tell you something, Mrs. Arden. The first, it's not quite simple. Right here in this court two days ago, I pronounced you dead. Now you turn up alive. Besides, at the same time, I married Mr. Arden to this lovely lady. And if you're alive, that makes me party to a bigamy. Your Honor, if you just annul a second marriage... Annul? Do you know what the law says about annulment? Where did you study law, Arden? Harvard. Oh, Harvard, eh? I'm a Yale man myself. <laughs> oh, poor Nicky. Mrs. Arden... I, uh, yes. I wasn't talking to you. Did oh. you mean me, Your Honor? I most certainly did, most certainly. Now, my dears, I understand that you were asking for an annulment. And I think I'm entitled to one. Yes, well, you know what uh, an annulment means? After the honeymoon I spent, definitely, yes. So that's it. A kissless bride. <laughs> Harvard man. Marriage annulled. Ellen Wagstaff Arden declared, well, very much alive. Oh, Judge. And my wife says nothing interesting ever happens in this court. Go on, the case is over. Get out of here. Get out of the courtroom, all uh, Goodbye, Bianca, you beautiful young thing. It's really too bad I have to take Nicky from you at this late date. Take him from me? I want you to know that I'm giving him to you, and you're welcome to him. Because he's nothing but... nothing but a... I know, I know. A Harvard man. Come on, Ellen. <laughs> Now, this is Harold Lloyd. Joel McRae. Constance Moore. And Gail Patrick. Saying goodnight to you for Old Gold. And I hope that you'll be with us again next Sunday when the Old Gold Comedy Theater presents George Murphy and Lucille Ball in A Girl, A Guy, and A Gob. See you then. My Favorite Wife was presented through the courtesy of RKO Studios, producers of Experiment Perilous. Joel McRae will soon appear in Paramount's The Virginian. Constance Moore is currently being seen in the RKO production show business. Gail Patrick will soon be seen in MGM's Twice Blessed. Now until next Sunday night, don't let little annoyances get you down. Why be irritated? Light an old gold. Its tobaccos are conditioned with apple honey to help guard against cigarette dryness and gives you more smoking pleasure. This is Bob Williams saying good night for old gold. This is the National Broadcasting Company.